The population of the Chernobyl Exclusion Zone is no longer zero, and it's believed that 119 people have began living here in this restricted zone. But if it's really so excluded, how does Google Maps have a bunch of media on this place, and how are animals slowly beginning to thrive once again? And those 119 people, how are they possibly all living healthy lives? And could feral people still be living among the animals? From the self settlers who call this forsaken land home, to the dogs that still roam around the power plant, can life, life exist in the Chernobyl Exclusion Zone? But first, quick shout out goes to Zach Evans for leaving us this comment on our Apocalyptic Places You Should Visit video. We think that abandoned missile silo in Arizona looks pretty interesting. Before we get started, make sure you smash that like button, subscribe for our new uploads, and hit that bell for notifications. Let's get on to the video. Number 10. Chernobyl Mushrooms After the Chernobyl meltdown took place, it led to the formation of the Chernobyl Exclusion Zone, where people weren't allowed to live. The toxic cloud particles affected a large part of Eastern Europe, and some material was found as far away as Switzerland. Although the area is pretty radioactive and everything, there aren't many humans, which gives animals a chance to flourish. Although not every animal will come out normal, some may begin to adapt to high levels of radiation. Researchers have noticed that spider webs come out asymmetrical, birds with strange beaks are out there, and radioactive wolves roam the land. Some are worried that these radioactive wolves will escape the zone and contaminate other animals around Europe, spreading mutations in the process. You can also find radiotrophic fungi here, which uses gamma radiation and converts it into energy. Sounds like some mushrooms you don't want to eat. Number 9. The Elephant's Foot The hot toxic sludge we see in this image is still to this day extremely lethal. If you're exposed to it for only 300 seconds, you'll experience fatal radiation sickness. Back in 1986, that amount of time would have only been 30 seconds. Stand next to this thing for 4 minutes and you'll have only 2 days to live. When people say a nuclear meltdown happened here, that's literally what happened. The radioactive materials used to fuel this plant literally melted the core and that's basically what we're looking at here. However, it's theorized that it will lose all of its radioactivity by the year 2219. A protective lid was placed over it which might help make the Chernobyl Exclusion Zone livable once again. Luckily, the elephant's foot hasn't hit groundwater yet, but it's still active. Number 8. The Chernobyl Nuclear Power Plant Sarcophagus In order to contain some of the radiation, this $1.8 billion steel and concrete structure was placed over reactor number 4, which exploded in 1986. It's built to last for the next 100 years, and the project began 9 years ago in 2010. It's made from 25,000 tons of material and measures 110 meters tall, or about 330 feet high. It covers an estimated 200 tons of radioactive corium, 300 tons of highly contaminated dust, and 16 tons of uranium and plutonium. There were eight main stages for this impressive feat of engineering. This included clearing the areas of debris, installing reinforced concrete walls around the perimeter, building a high-rise butress wall, various other concrete walls, and installing a ventilation system with the chimney. If for whatever reason the roof was to collapse due to an electrical fire, a design stabilization steel structure was installed to give it more support. As of right now, in 2019, they're testing out ways to safely remove some of the radioactive waste that's been stored here. While it would of course be highly dangerous to linger near the sarcophagus for too long, many people only report a small elevation in radiation on their Geiger counters while approaching it. Number 7. The Red Forest One of the creepiest forests on Earth is undoubtedly the Red Forest. Many trees died here from absorbing too much radiation from the explosion. Although some wildlife has managed to thrive in some places here, this is basically only due to the absence of mankind. The reason it gets the nickname of the Red Forest is because of the ginger brownish color of the pine trees. It remains as one of the most contaminated forests in the world, but somehow it's began to thrive with an abundance of wildlife. We can see a large amount of birds and boar in this area who develop mutations to allow them to survive the radioactive environment. Birds have apparently evolved into having much smaller brains, the trees grow at a slower pace, and in some areas, the trees are missing at least 90% of their leaves. Could humans somehow develop a mutation that allows them to live in areas with high doses of radiation? Who knows? Number 6. Open to Tourists Ever wondered what an abandoned nuclear wasteland might look like? Here's a place to come. You might get the chance someday to visit the Chernobyl Exclusion Zone if you're able to pay off the right people. More recently, it's been open to tourists, but only for a short period of time in order to get an apocalyptic Instagram post. After sitting for decades completely abandoned, it appears as though the town of Pripyat has become a tourist attraction. 
The Ukrainian government decided to open the exclusion zone to tourists in 2011, and 72,000 people visited it in 2018. Daytime tours at Chernobyl go for only about 200 to 300 bucks, and now you can even stay the night here, only 12 miles away from the sarcophagus. Travelers are tested for radioactive dust with metal devices before they're allowed to go back into the city. Number 5. The Self-Settlers There are approximately 119 self-settlers who manage to survive and even grow their own food in the Chernobyl Solution Zone. It almost seems as though they're kind of guinea pigs that the government lets settle the land to see if it's harmful or not. They seem to be doing surprisingly fine, and they claim that their food has the same amount of radiation as food from the capital city of Kiev. Some settlers were allowed back into the zone after many cleaning operations took place. This included bulldozing toxic buildings, scraping radiated topsoil, and disposing of radioactive automobiles from the streets. The majority of people that still live here are old anyway and enjoy the peacefulness that the exclusion zone offers. Number 4. The Exclusion Zone on Google Maps Possibly the most effective way to explore what's left in this isolated part of the world is through Google Maps, and you don't have to worry about getting attacked by radioactive bears. It even gives you access to Ground Zero and the control station where the big mistake was literally made. These people aren't covering their faces with gas masks or anything. Has Google started using self-control robot cars with cameras or something? A majority of the roads here in this region can be used to explore the wreckage digitally, and we can even see how a drone was flown over the iconic Ferris wheel. Also known as Hotel Policia, this spot is very easy to check out on Google Maps, and you can get a pretty eerie vibe from it. It was once the heart of the city, and it would commonly house scientists and nuclear experts researching the power plant. This would ironically also be the end of the hotel business here. If you're crazy enough to come to Pripyat, this hotel will certainly be on your tour guide. We wouldn't suggest staying the night here though, Yelp reviews say it might be a little bit out of date and the maids never come by anymore. What did Google Maps decide to censor here? Possibly a radioactive 20 foot tall mutant? Who knows? Number 3. The Dogs at Chernobyl Back when people once lived in this former Soviet utopia, they would have their best friends, or dogs, living with them. Dogs are typically with us from thick and thin, but when a nuclear meltdown takes place, it's not always easy to plan on bringing them with you. The Soviets demanded that everyone leave their pets behind as the evacuation took place. The Chernobyl exclusion zone used to be home to a total of about 120,000 people and many pet dogs. There are an estimated 250 dogs who are currently roaming the power plant itself, all of which are descendants of Pripyat pets. We mean literally at the power plant facility. They've been able to breed throughout generations in a radioactive environment, which is even known to decrease fertility. Many other dogs can be found roaming around the woods in the abandoned towns. Another 225 dogs live in the Chernobyl city center, who've resorted back to their wild ways, but still rely on the occasional scraps from the workers here. Many are reported to have rabies though, so probably smart not to pet them. There is currently a GoFundMe page to help feed, neuter, and vaccinate the stray dogs here. There are probably some cats here too, but whatever. Number 2. What would life be like here? The people that are moving back to this forsaken land tend to have some connection to it, as do the dogs who roam it. They feel as though the slight radioactivity isn't enough for them to totally abandon the land that their ancestors grew up on. The BBC sent some reporters here to document information about their lives, and they're a little bit surprised. Some people would tell you that the cold weather is more dangerous, but of course, they would be sugarcoating the issue. The self-sellers have access to a decent amount of amenities such as gas, electricity, cell phones. However, the main problem is drinking water. Substantial groundwater contamination is one of the main concerns for these people. Rainwater was once able to seep through the sarcophagus, through the hazardous material, and into the ground. As scientists noticed this, they made reparations to the tomb, but not without it doing its damage. People who live here claim that it's not a problem, and they boil all the water they get from the well. In any case, it turns out that rent prices here are pretty cheap, and if tourism continues to boom, the people could start making some good money if they open up a bed and breakfast. Or what about a nightclub? And number 1. What Needs to be Done Despite the traces of radiation in the groundwater and in the soil, the Chernobyl exclusion zone is becoming less radioactive as time goes by. Animal life has been able to exist here and even thrive in the same area where the meltdown took place. Tourists have been allowed to come and even stay the night here. So the next thing you have to wonder is when it might be okay to move here finally. Is it really as dangerous as people make it out to be? It certainly seems safer to live here than in some other polluted places around the world. Despite the risk, 3 to 4,000 people show up to work here to help contain the contamination. While the land might not be suitable for agriculture, is there some other type of industry that might thrive, like tourism, that can motivate people to live here permanently? Could factories be built that help gain some revenue? Could water treatment facilities be utilized that solve the problem of the contaminated water? 
These are all questions that could be answered sometime in the near future. One day we could see this beautiful land with inhabitants once again, but not right now. 